Hey y'all, welcome to Sweet Tea and Butterflies. We are part of a Craft Your Stash um, open collaboration. Uh, and it is for fall decor, sunflower and fall. Tasha uh, DIYs is our host and um, Tiffany is our co-host. I will leave their description or their links to their channels and the link to the playlist in the description box. So I am making a, a um, miniature book stack using some small wood blocks. And um, what I did was I took and I sanded because I had I had to cut it down. I had ordered some um, wood book stack pieces and I ordered the wrong size, so I had to cut them to the smaller size that I wanted. Now, these are layered, um, and you can see like the, the the lines in there of the layers, which make a really neat makes it look more like pages in there so i sanded the rough edges off and i took on the side that i was going to use for the binding and sanded where it rounded the the edges on those so that it looked more like a book binding and then um i painted I watered down some of the um, Waverly plaster, no, cashew, cashew. Um, I watered that down to do the book pages with so that it had kind of that, the color of book pages, but you could also still see the lines in there, the layers. So I did that on all three. And then um, proceeded to paint the rest of the book. And let's see, where am I? Oh, I'm still painting. I thought I cut some of that out. I guess not. Anyway, um, we have a lot of fun with these collaborations. Uh, there's a whole group of us um, that, you know, we get together and do different collaborations. So, um, and everybody is really talented. So make sure you check out the playlist, show the others uh, some love. So here um, I'm mixing some antique wax with the, the yellow. And I think it is... Um, let me see. Bright yellow. It's an apple barrel paint. Mixed a little bit of the uh, antique wax in with it to kind of tone down that bright a little bit. And unfortunately, I mixed too much of the antique wax in there. So I had to keep adding yellow to bring it back up to a more of a yellow instead of a dingy ick color. So for the top book, I painted the top of it fully. I painted the binding. And then I painted around the edges and left some of that bare in the middle. The reason I did this, um, and I did the same thing on um, each of the books as far as leaving that bare wood space in there. And I do that so that... Um, when I use the wood glue to put them together, um, the wood glue has, um, wood glue kind of changes the chemical, uh, it has a chemical reaction where it binds uh, with the wood. So if you don't have any um, paint or anything in there, then you get a more permanent hold, a better hold. I'm not sure I explained that as well as I had intended, but it is what it is. 
So I'm doing two yellow books and then I'm using Waverly's Ocean for the middle book. So the top and the bottom are going to be yellow and the middle book is going to be blue. And with that middle book, um, I only painted around the edges on each side of it so that I had that bare wood in the middle. <laughs> oh, pardon me, my uh, allergies are kind of getting to me. Oh, I think, yeah. And I'm sleepy. Go figure. I'm running a little bit late in getting this done for the playlist. Um, it was actually supposed to already be like five minutes ago posted. So I'm trying to hurry up and get this done so I can add it to the playlist. But as you can see there, um, you know, I went around the and just left a spot in the middle. Now with the yellow books, um, I went over the binding. I think I did like three coats of paint to help cover those layers that you can see in the wood. On the, just on the binding side. Um, here we have, maybe I'll get to it. There we go. So now I'm going to use some of these transfers. I got these off of Amazon and I'm just showing you the, the different transfer sheets that were in the package. I've already pulled, as you can see, the ones that I intend to use. And I'm using the, the little sunflowers in a jar or a vase. And then some random little leaves, acorns, and mushrooms on the bindings of the book, of each of the books. And I have no idea where my detail scissors are. I cannot find them, so it was a fun struggle to try to very carefully cut with the, the bigger scissors to cut out the ones that I wanted. Um, it's the only downside to these transfer, um, rub on transfer sheets is that some of the, the things are really close on there. So you've got to be really careful when you cut them out, um, for use. So I'm just taking a popsicle stick and using it to just ripen it here, the, um, the transfer down. And these particular transfers are more like stickers, kind of, um, not complaining. I, I love them. They're, they're gorgeous. It's just, um, I've gotten two or three different types of rub on transfers. Um, and some of them have, are more stickerish and some of them are thinner and I don't know. It's hard to explain, but anyway, I'm here. I am trying to get all my little tiny leaves and stuff cut out of there. And I'm going to put some of them on each of the bindings, the book bindings. And I, I really like doing these little book stacks. It's so much fun. Um, and I'll probably, I may do, um, a few more pieces for a tiered tray that match um, so that I can sell it as a set. I just, those, uh, little rub on, you just rub them on there. Um, they're not, they're not hard to work with at all. They're really easy. I did have with a couple of the small leaves I did have where I pulled up, pulled up the clear sheet to, to pull it and, um, use it to transfer it. 
and um, the transfer stayed on the backing instead of coming up with the clear sheet. I was able to, to put it back down and pick it up and still uh, do it. It just, um, I, I found that odd. That was the first time I encountered that. So here I'm trying to figure out exactly which ones I'm cutting out of there to use. I'm kind of, uh, I'm having, you know, fun with doing the, um, trying some new things. Uh, I've just recently started using some of the transfers. I've recently started using like the, um, chalk couture type stuff. So far, my stencils, uh, that I got the silk screen stencils and the chalk paste that I have um, right now. I got mo all of them from Amazon. I do intend um, on ordering some of the chalk couture stuff. <clears throat> Brenda from Rustic and Lace DIYs is a um, chalk couture designer. I don't know if anybody in this playlist is. Um, if they are, uh, we all watch each other's videos, so if any of you that are in the playlist are also a Chalk Couture designer, please chime in um, in the comments so that anybody who's interested can, you know, make use of your link to order. Here I'm just kind of... Sometimes it's a struggle to find... to to find the edge where you can get a hold of it and start to peel it up. And this one gave me like a really hard time, <laughs> as you can see. So I'm curious, we're going, you know, we're coming into the, the fall season and the fall decor. Um, and I, I get most inspired in the fall and at Christmas time for uh, crafting. <clears throat> I don't know what it is about fall and Christmas. You know, well, Christmas, obviously, but I don't know what it is about fall. But that's like my favorite crafty time. Mine and Dee Dee's both. Um, we usually, when we get together and, and craft, um, it's usually close to you know, fall and Christmas and, um, whatnot. So we end up, we end up with a lot more fall and Christmas crafts than we do any other crafts. But anyway, I'm curious when it comes to fall, what are your favorite fall elements for decorating? Um, do you prefer sunflowers, pumpkins, or apples? I think that's the three main things. And you're feel free to chime in if there's something I didn't name there that you like to do for fall. So um, I took this uh, cute ribbon that I got. Did I get it at Dollar Tree? I either got it at Dollar Tree or Dollar General. I don't remember. Um, and I put it wrapped it around, tacked it, you know, tacked the end on here, wrapped it around, tacked, and then glued it over on itself. And if I wasn't putting a bow on, I would have done that on the bottom, started on the bottom, and finished on the bottom. <clears throat> but I'm putting a bow on it, so... The bow's going to hide where those overlap. Um, so anytime that I'm I'm crafting, if I'm planning on doing a bow, I do it this way so that um, it's a cleaner, more finished look. I don't have the, you know, where the two ends meet up showing anywhere because it's covered by the bow. So I just did a simple shoestring bow. Um... Uh, there's my little fur ball. You can see him a little bit. That's the newest member. That's Smokey. He's a silver tabby and 
I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking about getting a kitten. My legs are like all scratched up. I think he thinks that his sole purpose in life is to chase the feet that are walking through the house. I have done stepped on him two or three times because he's run right under my foot as I was mid-step. I don't know if he's going to survive. <laughs> <laughs> but he's great to cuddle with when he's caught, you know, when he's ran all his energy out. He just curls up on my lap. So I took one of these planks from uh, Dollar Tree. Uh, they, they're the ones that come. I think it's six in a package. And I, four by four, I think, or four, four and a half by four and a half. I think they're four and a half by four and a half. And I used the cashew. Um, Talk Paint by Waverly on this as well. Oh, I'm fighting the yawns, guys. I went to bed earlier last night and I still am sleepy. I don't get it. So this is the one that I'm using the um, silk screen and the chalk paste on. And when you get these silk screens, um, you have to fuzz them a couple of times before you use them the first time so that they don't pull your paint up um, when you go to peel them off. I'm fighting the yawns over here, y'all. So sorry. Oh, anyway. So I took uh, some of the brown paste for the peduncle on the pumpkin. And I've... I've done a few projects with the chalk paste and I don't know why I don't think before I sit down and have everything in my lap. I don't know why I always forget to grab my um, painter's tape so that I can tape off where I don't want that chalk paste. Make it more difficult on myself when I'm trying to get in a little area like I am here because, well, I forget to grab something that I can put over it uh, to keep me from getting messy and getting chalk paste where I don't want it. I did manage to successfully do this without it. It just took a little bit longer. I had to be just a little more precise and, and slow about it. So when you're using the stencils and the chalk paste, um, if you're doing several different layers and whatnot, um, or different colors, you want to make sure that you pull it back after you apply each layer so that um, your chalk paste doesn't dry and um, in your, your stencil and then come up when you, when you pull it later. Um, I did forget to do that here. I went and dabbed... Um, now with this pumpkin, I'm I'm doing kind of a multicolor blend of sorts. Does that make any sense? So what I'm doing is I'm dabbing a little bit of each of the colors in different spots on this pumpkin, and then I will um, scrape it where you have like a well, you'll see. You'll see when I, I go to pull it off of there. Um, but anyway, and here's where I realized, oh, wait, I didn't do, I didn't pull it back. So I did that real quick before I went in with the next color. I used a, the brown for the peduncle. I used a dark green and none of these chalk paste actually have a color name. On them, they're just kind of generic jars of chalk paste. Um, but anyway, I used a green, an orange, a yellow, a red, and of course the brown for the peduncle. There's the orange. It's kind of messy when you try to open it the first time, you know, that foil. 
it's hard not to get it, every, you know, the chalk paste everywhere. And then here is the red. And, you know, I have found that I am just like my mom. I'll do one simple project when I'm starting a, you know, a, a new thing, you know, like the, the chalk paste and whatnot. Um, the first one I did, I think I did just one color across it and whatnot. And then the second one, I, you know, I had to go complicated. My mom was the same way. Um, when she, she took classes to learn counted cross stitch. And, you know, usually when you take those classes, you get like this little ornament or something like that, you know, and that's your project that you're using to learn on she didn't even finish that um and then she turned around you know she got the concept down and then she turned around and did four um eight by or eight by ten or no i think they were nine by twelve norman rockwell very intricate see how it's got that cute little blend there but yeah, she, she didn't even finish the little project from the class. She, you know, went to the class, got the concept down, and then went on to like the most complicated thing. And I, I guess I must have inherited that from her because I'll play with it the first time and keep it simple, and then I'm like, oh, okay, I got the concept. Let's let's go more complicated. Go figure. Okay, so with chalk paste. Um, it's usually good to seal it. So I'm putting some matte Mod Podge on there. This sponge brush. Um, I didn't grab my paint brushes when I sat down either. And the sponge brush was on my table. <clears throat> but it's got dried glue or dried Mod Podge on the end of it. So I'm having fun trying to do this with a partially stiff um, sponge brush. But, like I said before, I had everything on my lap, and I was not getting up again if I didn't have to. So, I had set that aside um, to dry while I did the, um, the, the um, ribbon and the bow on the book stack. And now I'm taking this really pretty um, burlap ribbon that has fall leaves on it. Um, all of those ribbons that were on my thing there, I, um, believe I, I, I can't remember if they're Dollar Tree or Dollar General. It's one of the two. But I'm making a, um, a shoestring bow for that one too. Trying to keep it simple. Although the shoestring bows, are, they should be simple and they are simple when I'm doing them with um, twine, but when you're doing them with a ribbon that's got a print on one side, it can get a little bit tricky. You got to kind of twist and, and whatnot to make sure that your ribbon is all facing the right you know direction. And then I just went and glued that up on the corner there, and then I'm taking some tumbling tower blocks and gluing them to the back so that it will stand up by itself. And see, you'll see more in the final reveal. So, I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers. That is my next milestone. <clears throat> and I am doing a giveaway of some of these, some of the craft supplies that I got from um, from this haul. And I'm showing some of the stuff there. But anyway. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.